Hey all. Um, so another Kony 2012 video, unfortunately. Um, so you probably have heard that um, the co-founder of the Invisible Children charity was arrested um, for being naked in public, possibly drunk, possibly, um, possibly masturbating himself, possibly vandalizing cars. Um, and there's also been the negative reaction to the video in Uganda itself. Um, before I even get started, I want to put something out there. Um, when I first heard this news, there was a small part of me that went, told you so. See? And, you know, that small part of me was, I guess, happy or not really happy, but content in like a kind of a way which doesn't make me happy. And that part of me doesn't make me happy. Uh -huh. Because obviously being right in this case is very bad. Um, being right, being, uh, I guess, having my preconceived notions uh, validated means that people aren't going to get helped and there are going to be negative repercussions. So I just want to say whilst I had that feeling, whilst I was having it, I was thinking, you know, this is a bad way to feel. Um, and so if at any point I come across as gloating, or kind of you know having a you told I told you so attitude um, that's that's me being a bad person I just want to put that out there that's to make that clear um, this there's, there's nothing positive about this for anyone and it's it shouldn't be about I told you so um, so to the second part first uh, there's a young Turks video which I'll link to basically they screened the Kony 2012 video in Uganda and they had to stop the screening because people were basically started rioting essentially um, to which I have to say that kind of validates the criticism I think that a lot of people had it kind of validates this idea of uh, white man's burden style activism because it seems like they didn't test their video in Uganda now with a charity like this that's supposedly doing grassroots work and be, that's actually got a presence in Uganda um, if you want to help the Ugandan people why not do it with a dialogue with them why not even involve them in the making of this production or at least um, see what the reaction of different groups of Ugandans from different parts of the region are that you don't know in advance to see whether they support the message or not um, and then to make sure that you produce a product which reflects their views um, which, you know, since they do invest so much money in making videos and these awareness raising things, I think that should be an integral part of that then. Um, and apparently that wasn't done. So um, that's kind of regrettable. And I think the criticisms that many people had and that I picked up on when I first came across the video and saw people raise, I think they've been uh, to some extent validated. I think... Um, it's increasingly clear that really um, things aren't as simple as all as they were portrayed in the video. Um, now to the second point. Um, the co-founder of Kony being basically, he was videotaped naked having, uh, like, bashing, hitting the road with his fists. To the incident itself, it seems pretty obvious to me, I know we shouldn't make mental health judgments, but it seems pretty obvious to me that this guy was having like a, a break a full-on breakdown like he was I don't know uh, psychotic or whatever he I don't know maybe he's bipolar and he was whatever is wrong with him it was a mental health situation so I don't think it's uh, fair to condemn him for that in any sense he was under a lot of stress under a lot of pressure and he broke down um, so the incident itself, I think, you know, it's good that he's in hospital, he's getting help. I think the incident itself isn't something that we should criticize him for. He has a problem. I myself have a mental health issue. Um, I haven't talked about it yet in any videos. I might uh, in the future. But, you know, one of my fears is that I'll be in a situation where that will get me uh, into some form of trouble. And then people will just judge me as a you know as a, as a horrible person for having for having an issue and this in this instance clearly he was having a mental health issue so 
I, I, I don't think we should go and say, oh, look what a clown or an idiot he is because he had a breakdown. He had a breakdown, um, and it's an illness. That said, it raises a lot of questions to me about the organization of this Invisible Children charity. As we know, he's the co-founder and pretty much their chief, if not only, spokesman. Now, they are not a very transparent organization, um, and they seem to be a fairly kind of uh, small group of people behind this. Now, the question then is, what kind of role was he playing? How integral was he to this charity? Um, you know, are, are his decisions being checked by people that are accountable and that can rectify things? Um, because of, I'm pretty sure, based on the severity of his breakdown, this guy and people around him were aware that he had some mental health issues. Um, and so it makes it very questionable to me why, you know, I'm not saying that mentally ill people shouldn't be in, in positions. I don't want to say that because I have mental health issues and I definitely don't want people to tell me, no, you can't, you know, you can't do anything with children or anything with this or that because you're mentally ill. So you're a crazy person just gets, get lost. But obviously you have to take that into account and you have to kind of, um, plan around that and, when someone that might have a that kind of situation arise is in that kind of uh, situation where such issues may develop, what are the mechanisms um, to make sure that that doesn't have a big effect on the work that they're doing? And considering we know nothing about invisible children really, uh, it's very hard to understand what's going on. And considering that in a way, as they describe it themselves, it's basically this three friends project and then they just got you know a lot of money and it just got bigger. Um, I don't know that they have these structures in place at all. So in that sense, I think it kind of shows uh, the fragility of this organization, which considering that they're trying to raise a lot of money could be a very bad thing if it's really are going to run into severe organizational difficulties um, with this guy's breakdown. Um, and I guess this is also, it, it kind of relates to another issue about this charity um, and charities in general. Uh, when it first hit the, hit the news, everyone was very excited, everyone loved it. Um, and you know then people started criticizing it and there was a response of you know don't criticize these people they're doing good work look at how they're getting the word out um and so people were basically drawing this connection between what they're doing is working in terms of getting to people so that means it must be having a positive impact it must mean that the people behind it know what they're doing and it must mean that they're good people and now this inference isn't correct um what you did know is that what they were doing was working in as far as um, getting out to a lot of people. Uh, so their strategy, obviously, of targeting celebrities, that Rihanna tweet, that worked very well. Um, but unfortunately, as we now know, that didn't mean that they really knew what they were doing. Um, as a lot of the criticism shows, it also doesn't necessarily mean that they're good people. I'm not saying they're bad people. Um, you know, they they might have, you know, they probably have their flaws. The thing is, we didn't know about these things. We didn't have any idea about what we're getting into. Um, you know, ultimately, what kind of people they are, it's there in their heads. We don't have access to that um, directly. But we didn't have any idea when this first hit. And to then tell us that we have to just accept that as a fact and basically say, well, they're, they're good people with a good cause and they must have thought this through, so just accept it and go with it, is a risky strategy. Really, all it tells you when such a campaign hits it big initially is that they found a good way to get things uh, to the public attention. They found a way to uh, harness social media or other media. That's the only thing it tells you. It doesn't tell you anything about their cause or the people involved. So that's why the initial um, response should be to find out more. And if you try to find out more and you find that there's not much more to be found out because 
there's not much information available, then that should be a red flag and you should go and check out more and you shouldn't go to a snap judgment of this must be fantastic. Why? Because if this group were a kind of very grassroots, very transparent organization, then there would be more information out there. What it's telling you when you look at you know their website and then you Google them around and there's not really much information, it tells you that that group probably isn't as transparent as it should be. And that's a pretty big problem when you're asked to put all of your trust in it uh, on a kind of a snap judgment. Um, so I think that was the problem with it. And I think, you know, that's to a large extent going to be now the meltdown. People are, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't have... Uh, you know, I can't predict the future, but my prediction will be that Coney 2012 will go down after this point um, as uh, as largely a failure. Um, and with that, it will carry the great risk of disillusionment for a lot of people. Um, that said, you know, there is obviously the potential to actually use this as a learning and teaching experience. Because I know there were a lot of critical voices when this video came out, and that's great. But there were also a lot of people who uncritically um, just bought into it. So this is an opportunity not to gloat about it and not to go out and say, you know, it's all for nothing. We can't help Africa. Uh, let's just fix our own backyard and screw everyone else. No, it's an opportunity to say what exactly did go wrong. It wasn't the cause really that was wrong. It wasn't trying to help Africa or get rid of a warlord. That's not ba a bad thing. It wasn't the enthusiasm itself that was wrong. Uh, it was, you know, people wanting to get rid of bad people, you know, or fix a situation. That's a good, a positive force inherently. What went wrong is that those things didn't go together with enough critical analysis of the situation to make sure that it was all legit. And they didn't go along with enough transparency um, for people to actually either be able to see whether the organization was for real or not, or for the organization possibly um, to be able to adjust itself more to have more realistic um, approaches. Um, and so those are all things that we then should push for the future. Next time, we know what to do. And next time, an organization like Invisible Children should know that uh, what needs to be done first is to do the groundwork, to build an organization that is trustworthy so that when they start their message, people can go and say, yes, I trust these people. And they can go and say, well, yep, the way it looks is that this is a legit organization. Uh, they, you know, they're asking for my input. They're asking me to get involved with the organization, not just with their campaign. So I'm interested rather than presenting this kind of slick product um, which is, you know, um, ruled from above like Coney was, like Invisible Children is. And that's my final kind of point on this. At the end of the video, one of the things they show is, you know, the pyramid with the powerful people on top and the uh, us on bottom. And we're going to turn the py pyramid upside down and the people are going to make the decisions. And it's a bit of this kind of revolution and everything's, you know, people are going to true democracy and people are going to fix the world. Um, good message. I actually believe in it. I think it's not necessarily pure utopia. The problem is the way they ran their organization was the opposite. They produced a slick product with no real way for people to get insight or provide input. They basically provided this. They were on top of the pyramid. You were supposed to be on bottom distributing the materials. That was your job as part of this campaign putting up posters um, your job wasn't really to think for yourself and I went to the website at the, I think I had two websites what I found is I didn't find a forum I didn't find any way of interacting with other people that were talking about this campaign on their own websites um, and now that to me is very disturbing because what is this power of these new media it's interactivity it's the ability to communicate about these issues and to be critical and to have these conversations. And so suddenly there's this new uh, 
new charity that uses this media and everyone's amazed by how well they're doing it to garner support and views but they neglect what is to me one of the most important aspects the interactivity they they didn't have any of that and at least in part it seemed to be because they wanted to be in control um, you know instead they could have been completely different it could have been a grassroots organization they could have, when they were building their web systems, built them in order to have, you know, forums and everything available for people to immediately interact. They could have made it much more of a YouTube campaign where they would actually, you know, um, encourage dialogue about this, all these kind of things. And I'm not saying that those are silver bullets that are somehow going to fix it. And I'm not naive enough to, you know, to say that that's, that that's going to mean that you can't have a campaign that's, that's not legit that operates on that basis but the fact that uh, they were only using social media and new media in the same way that that old media are usually used which is kind of as a bullhorn to just uh, to just push information into you and then expect the people to just distribute that information without really um, disseminating it properly that was to me always something which I found kind of dodgy about the organization um, so you know I mean I'm still not going to make any big moral judgments on the people involved I think they got some things wrong um, I think there were miscalculations in there but you know uh, as the saying goes I don't know the content of their hearts um, and you know they were three relatively young guys they were caught up in this maybe it got too big for them um, you know they were running a smaller charity and then it got really big and they thought they could fix everything and it didn't work out and maybe that's why he had that that kind of breakdown um, and so you know uh, I'm not gonna judge them on a personal level but you know as an organization I think they had many failings and most importantly though you know it's like let's say they had the best of intentions then whose responsibility is to figure out what they're doing isn't gonna, you know, isn't optimal, that there are some flaws. It's our responsibility as the people who either, you know, either support this campaign and put it out everywhere or say, well, here's this thing, but this is my view on it. I don't really agree with them on everything. Or say, no, you have to go back to the drawing board the way it is currently. It's not going to work. Uh, and I think that's the message for the future. Uh, it shouldn't be a message of it's all useless. It shouldn't be a message of, um, you know, oh, told you so, you idiots. Uh, you know, um, don't be so naive. Don't, you know, it should be a message of always take a moment to, you know, investigate information that you're exposed to wherever it comes from in life. Always try to figure out what, people are saying that have a lot of knowledge in the field always think critically um, and always try to be involved with organizations that let you really be involved um, always try to be a part of organizations that have a kind of democratic grassroots structure um, and there are lots of these organizations you know I mean I've been part of Amnesty uh, on campus and they run you know they run groups in all of the suburbs and you go there and then they elect like the higher committee and you, you know you discuss all of the campaigns and things like that um and so there are lots of these groups available and i think that's the model that we should be supporting in general not this kind of propaganda model of here's your campaign go and spread it anyways i'll see you guys all later